Today is a mining kind of day. Welcome to Mining Now. Today we are joined by Leonardo Santana from TetraTech. He is here to discuss their micro seismic technology for tailing dam monitoring. But before we can get started, let's thank our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by CIM. CIM is the leading membership organization for technical content and creating connections in the mining industry. Mining professionals and students can access a breadth of technical expertise through the CIM Technical Paper Library, the OneMind Digital Repository, the CIM Journal, the CIM Magazine, and also attend upcoming CIM webinars. Whether you're working in the field, in the office, or at home, join the community today and learn how they can help you achieve your professional goals. Visit them at CIM.org. We're also um, sponsored by Savannah Equipment. Savannah Equipment supplies new and used mining equipment around the world from plaster to underground to ore processing plants. They have gold concentrating tables, trommels, and mineral jigs in stock now to take advantage of the high gold prices. Visit them at SavannahEquipment.com where you will find more equipment every day. Next up, we also have Power Zone Equipment. When you need a specialized team of world-class engineers for your oil and gas pipelines, dewatering, or any fluid handling needs, you want to visit PowerZone.com. In addition to their inventory of rebuilt pumps, motors, engines, they also have an amazing team to design and engineer your systems, no matter the challenge, no matter the location. Get in the zone with Power Zone. Visit them at PowerZone.com. Well, let's get on with this episode of Mining Now. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mining Now. I am your host, Jared Downey. Today, we are featuring Tetra Tech. Um, our guest is Leonardo Santana. He is the technical leader of geotechnology. Thank you, Leonardo, for coming on the show. Thank you, Jared. Um, we've got some technical information to dig into uh, today. And it's definitely out of my, my field of understanding. So I'm going to leave it to you to unpack it. Um, we're going to be talking about tailings dams, uh, open pits, and, and, and how your technology integrates into those uh, systems. So, but before we do that, can you just please first, um, a lot of people are going to know Tetra Tech if you're watching Mining Now. But can you just give us that that um, understanding of the company's reach, their size, their scale, what areas they service, that sort of whole whole uh, gamut of what they offer? Okay, uh, TetraTech is a global company. Okay, based in the headquarters is in Pasadena, California, and uh, TetraTech has around twenty two thousand associates. Okay, with a revenue annual revenue of three point one billion. And I'm part of the group of Tetra Tech in South America that we report to Canada area. In Canada, we have 3,000 uh, employees, associates, and in Brazil, to South America, we have around 350 in, with operations in Brazil, Peru, and Chile. Okay. Okay, I didn't actually realize you had so many employees um, based in, they're actually based in Canada, 3,000. And I, I think all oh, the slide actually will come up too. It's, you have 50 offices um, in Canada alone. Is that right? Yeah, is that right? And then who are those 20,000 associates? What, what, would, what would be some examples of who, of who that would be? Would that be people that like rep your products or, or people that you work with and in integrating into systems? What would be some examples of them? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's 20, 22 experts that we have a global network of knowledge inside the company. We, we cover most of the consulting area uh, based in science approach. Yeah, we have uh, engineers, civil engineers, we have environmental engineers, we have system analysts, okay, geologists. Uh, we, we work with uh, international development projects is is a be, is a really uh, spread company in terms of the knowledge. Right. Yeah. Well, I want to talk about that a little bit. Um, the, in those area of expertise, um, can you give us that overview? And we're gonna we're gonna dig down into very specific technology on the show. Um, but I, I I always want to just have the audience understand sort of that that plethora of what you're offering. So can you talk about the area of expertise uh, that Tetra Tech has? Yeah, well, in, in, in South America, we work for geotechnics, okay? 
most, most of this expertise we have support in a global, that global environment, as I said, okay? It's very nice to have this, uh, the, the brightest mind from the company in, at one bottom of the computer, okay? And we work for geotechnics. We have uh, social impacts. We have a social group here. We have the, the group of engineer, pure engineer, you know, the several engineers. Okay. We have the coastal environment. We work for uh, so uh, audit, environmental audit. And the area that I'm, I'm a technical leader is the geotechnology group. Okay. We have in our group four main disciplines. Yeah. The, the instrumentation monitoring group, the, the system analyst, system development. We develop our own softwares and, and tools. We have the job applied geophysics that will be the topic of we are talk. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want to, um, I think it's so important when you talk technical, there's going to be a certain group of people that understand kind of right away because maybe they're experts in the field as well. But for a lot of people watching, it's, it's, it's nice to get real world examples so that they can, they can sort of envision what you're doing. So I just want to get this right. So the, the micro seismetic monitoring for tailings dam, um, obviously tailings dams um, is a huge topic of discussion within the mining industry right now. So can you, is there a project that sort of stands out for you? Um, a, a, a recent project would be nice. Something that stands out that you can sort of walk the audience through what that project is and then how Tetra Tech was involved in it. Okay. We, we started dealing with uh, micro uh, looking for an environmental solution. We work for a mining company, one of our clients. They're looking for some monitoring of uh, natural caves close to mining operations. Okay. And we went for an international benchmark in 2015. And it moved us after the two failures that we had in Brazil, one in mm. 2015 and another one in 2019, to adapt this technology for the, the tailings dam monitoring. In, in that benchmark we, we did uh, four years ago, or five years ago, we, we found an institute that is is, uh, head, the head part is in Australia, in Hobart. It's an institute of mining seismology and Tetra Tech made a partnership with the, the, this institute to bring this technology for the tailing dam environment. Mm. And uh, we started this year, we went through two seasons and this year we signed a contract with, to install 16 monitoring, micro size monitoring system in 16 different dams, okay? Is, is, is a huge ramp up and it shows how the technology was accepted by the market. And today we have 24 uh, active systems in place, commissioning. I just want to step back for a second, Leonardo, because you, you mentioned uh, a couple uh, dam failures in that, that happened in 2015. Just to set up a context of the problem you're solving, what went wrong with those dams? Uh, and it, you know, we don't on this show. It's not really focused on you know naming companies and all that sort of stuff. There, there's plenty of other platforms for that. But just on a technical aspect, what was the failure in those dams? And, and then tie that to the what the technology, the problem it solves. Um, are we able to approach it that way? Just to make it a little clearer. Yeah, uh, the first dam that we fought in 2015, they experienced five. Uh, Seismic events, okay? What a seismic event is, you have, an, uh, it's like a, a small earthquake, it's not a mm -hmm. huge, that you, you, you bring the ground motion and it makes the ground shake, okay? Where it's very too close to the dam. It brought us to start a pilot project with three dams to test the technology, okay? Then in 2019, we had the, the biggest one, failure. You know, not, not related by uh, a specific seismic event, but we, the, the mining industry started to think about it to, to have new technology that we can support the current uh, geotechnical monitoring uh, techniques, okay? And uh, the, the, the mining company, they use it to go through inspection, a visual inspections for all the tailing body, the tailing, the tailing structure, the dam structure, 
and use some true localizing instruments like piezometers. Okay? They go for a period, uh, as an example, two times a day, got some data, and, and they do some analysis. And we brought with this institution the geophysical, as, as a, a geophysical monitoring as a tool okay, that increase the understanding and the view of the dam structure. And when we started to install the geophones over the, the dam, and we started to, to measure okay, in a quasi real time, the delay of the data is from one of the approaches 10 minutes and the other one is one, two, three minutes of the delay of to getting the data and, and see in the computer. So when you talk about a seismic event, now this could be a this could be anything from an act of God, meaning something like an earthquake, or it could be a um, in a in an open pit mine. There's a tailings pond a couple kilometers away. I think we have a slide we can bring that up later. And um, there's a blast, and that that could be a man-made blast. So any two of those would those both be considered seismic events? Uh, go, an act of God or or a, a man-made blast? Is that right? Is that right? Okay. Yeah. And what differs what you're offering is the micro is mm. okay. that everyone is used to listen about the, the Richter scale, okay? It's for big efforts. Yeah. You know, it's a, a magnitude A, magnitude seven, okay? Mainly the guys from California, Chile. When it work for micro we are talking about uh, minus two to zero. It means that is the, the, the sensors is too sensitive that we go in a negative scale from the magnitudes of the seismic events. That's why we are really monitoring. So it's doing it, and I, I guess that's, that's the micro seismic, would, of course, is the name. So it's monitoring even the, the smallest movements, then it's like below even what the Richter scale even even uh, numbers, essentially. Is that right? Yeah, we have experience with, we monitor some helicopters, close the structures, okay? Trucks, uh, we, as you said, you have the blasting, the man-made uh, ground motions, and you have the natural ones. In, in, in that's the more, most common. But you have okay. two, some trucks, railroads, and helicopters, everything that makes a creative vibration close to the dam we can we can actually monitor is that um now I, this might be a difficult question to answer leonardo but if is is a train trucks machines digging like you know i mean obviously when we're talking trucks we're, t we're talking the giant rock trucks um these aren't just your standard pickups so they're, they're they have huge amounts of weight are they they wouldn't be enough, though. We're, I mean, what you're, would, would they be enough to affect the integrity of a tailings dam over, over a period of 20 years? Would there be enough movement there to actually affect that? Or, or what would be the need to, to, to have that data on the, that such low-end uh, vibrations and movement? That's the, the answer we are looking for, okay? We know mm -hmm. that the, the miners, the, the mining companies, the, the generating... Uh, Vibrations, we know that. The, the big change is no one is started to monitor this in records, okay? And with these sensors, we started to do this, yeah? My, my, my I'm, I'm studying that my PhD is, is looking for the blast over the, the, the dam in a period of one year, okay? To understand mm -hmm. if, if, he, if the blast can really cause or what type of impacts can cause in the dam structure. But right. what I can say to you, it's a long way. We need to have more historical data. We need to, to have these systems in one, two, or three years more to have an understanding. Okay? But we are, in the, we are following the path that we can answer is in the near future because we are really monitoring all this source what the vibration these sources are causing and what's the main impact over the dam because we are we have the sensors over there right so and i yeah it's something i didn't think of when i was preparing for this interview so you're really as much as you're monitoring trying to get real-time information to obviously protect the integrity of a tailings dam you're also document documenting for future 
observation when other people are uh, all over the world are developing new new mines, open pits, tailings, dams, everything like that. You're really creating a documented um, uh, development over time um, with these systems. Is that right? Is that right? In in a certain point, it's like uh, we are creating a, a, our own database. Okay. Mm. Because we are being recorded for the operations in, in two different structures. And we believe that over uh, one, two, three, or four years, we have a huge database. And we, we support a lot of back analysis from the mining companies okay, to take decisions. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the physical part of it for a second. The actual, um, and it's nice because you, you have a slide. Sensors are always these funny things that sometimes I'll have discussions with someone about a sensor, but I don't actually physically know what we're talking about. Um, and but you have a slide. I I, I think we could well bring it up. Um, I, I'm sure Gaudi can. Is there's a there's actually a picture. It looks like it's it's a it's sort of a long um, like a long tube like sensor, and then it's got a, a core um, a cord a, a wire attached to it. So can you talk about the physical setup? I think there's some pictures of of it being dug along the side of the dam. Can you talk about first the physical um, sensor itself and some of its components? And then can you uh, talk about the installation of the sensor? I think you said you've got 24 installed and on two different sites. Is that right? And, and each, each, each monitor, each uh, when they call system, is, belongs to one dam. Okay? Okay. We have uh, in many places, many uh, different three main uh, mining companies in Brazil with different regions. Okay. And uh, you have sensors for surface, and we have sensors we need to put in a hole. Okay? That's not a big hole. For the, the, the open pit, we use it to drill. We use it to have a hole. So it depends on the, the open pit. Is in, in my studying case, is, is around 300 meters depth. Okay? We, we put the sensor. When it, we, we grout the sensors, and we started to monitor the, the open pit activity, and over the dam, we can we dig a hole with 50 centimeters. We install that. We, we put it in the at the north scale. We point it to the north, okay. Mm -hmm. And we do all the engineer stuff. And we need to 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 open trenches. We need to put the cables. We need to put uh, energy, and to define the link of automation, okay. As, uh, as, I said, as I mentioned before, is a quasi real-time monitor system. And we need an intern we, we put an internet link over mm. the field. Depends on the area, we can use uh, satellites, okay? But you need to establish a communication with our data center. We store the right. data in, in our uh, infrastructure, and this infrastructure uh, communicates with IMS service in Australia, and they do all the bench calculations that we can uh, see the data through some mainly four tools, okay, softwares that we, our expert, our team, they use it to work with. Okay, I, I, I apologize for these. You know, if you've watched the show, I, I'm, I'm not the expert on a lot of these things. So my questions are, are very layman questions. But when I was first thinking, I was thinking it was almost, um, pardon the horrible example, but almost like, a, almost like a set of Christmas lights with the sensors being the Christmas lights. But that's not actually what it is. And then that are laid under the ground and connected by one central um, cable. But they're actually individually, uh, they're individually placed. Like how a lot, around a tailings dam, um, do they circle the circumference of the dam? And then are they, I mean, how far apart would one be from the other? Well, they, we put it over the dam structure, okay? We go to cover the crest first. Uh, we have one array that is it's a basic one, is seven sensors, okay? With uh, geophones with 5.5, 4.5 hertz of frequency. And we use it to have around six, seven. We have some case, we have 10 sensors installed. Yeah. And, okay. And, yeah, we... we we try to cover the whole dam structure, okay? Each bench of the dam, yeah? But focus and we, we have more sensors over the crest. It, going to the toe of the dam, we have lower the quantity of sensor decrease. Okay? 
Mm -hmm. It's around okay. 100 meters close it's in, in, in general okay, for each, the, each, the distance between the sensors. Approximately. Okay. Now, the other thing I have, so you sent the, you said you, you drill for the sensors that are down at the open pit. You're drilling those sensors in. We have some, you have some nice pictures there that we can bring up on that slide. And then on the, um, on the tailings dam, it's like a trench that goes along where you deposit the, the, the sensors in there. Now, are those, um, actually, I want to scroll down. Bear with me one second. I'm jumping around a little bit on you here, Leonardo, but it's, um, I know that some of the people listening, um, they can kind of piece it together. And just let me find that. There is a nice chart. Where is that? Um, and it shows it that it's a couple kilometers apart. Where is that? It's on, right, this, on this project example. It shows a tailings dam and the open pit is from the furthest on each point is two kilometers apart, meaning at the center they're about 1.3 kilometers apart or something from the two center points or not from the uh, two closest points or quite close. Is that right? Is that right? Is, yeah. Uh, so, the, sorry, go ahead. The, this, project, this project example is part of my PhD that is uh, funded by Mosaic Fertilizers and, and uh, they, are, they, are, they have a, a a partnership of technical and scientific supported with uh, Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. And I'm in the middle of my PhD studies and in the, the Rio example. And that's an example of the TetraTech is monitoring. I'm, a, I'm, I'm consider myself a lucky guy because I work, <laughs> the, the common I work is, is, the, is, the, is doing this monitoring and I can study and, and they have the support of the client in different, in different ways, okay? In, as a work employee of Tetra Tech and as a student of Federal University, having the support from Mosaic uh, company. And you're getting what, paid to go to school is what you're saying. Yeah, that is it, okay? <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's a good setup. I need I need one of those gigs. Um, no, it's and it's very it's very good work that that's that's happening. And what's nice is you do have these slides and these examples. And without those, it's we've done some technical talks like this before, and because there's limited visual, it makes it tough to sort of communicate it to an audience. Um, especially because we do have we have a mining audience, but we also have people that watch. I mean, we have a growing egg audience. <laughs> so people are going to walk from different sectors and are trying to understand it. What I was going to ask is on that open pit, the sensors that are over there and then the dams, there's obviously uh, different data that's getting collected. So let's say, um, let's say there's a controlled explosion and the, the sensors obviously track that. Are you competing? Is part of it comparing the data of the two sensors on the two different locations? How is that sort of um, that information extracted? Um, if, if I'm asking that correctly. Yeah, it's correctly. Uh, we have uh, six boreholes over the, the, the open pit. Okay. Each borehole will have two sensors at different locations, different positions. Yeah, I see those. And two kilometers far from the, the open pit, we have the dam with four sensors, okay? And when, when uh, a blessing happened, and it, it depends on the, the, the way they are operating, we can collect data from the whole sensors, okay? I'm talking about the whole four, uh, 16 sensors. And I have one example that I brought to you that is it was, it had a blast that was triggered by 14 sensors. Only two sensors did not uh, record data from, from ground motions. That's something that's, you know, you can compare. You say that's all. Oh, I, I have, I have the, the, the trigger. I have the, the blast, what they did. And I, I measure in, in the impact over the open pit. And I measure the impact at the dam. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is, um, this so this really, this system has, uh, is Tetra Tech the only company doing this system? I know there's a partnership with the Institute in Australia, um, but is this, is this exclusive? Um, and 
Two questions. Is this exclusive to Tetra Tech? And is this um, at full commercial use? Could could a mine in Africa or a new mine in Canada, or do they have access to this technology to be able to, to uh, t does Tetra Tech implement this into any system now? Is it is it at full commercial use? Yeah, it's a full commercial use. And uh, you can say what happened, why you, you have these systems here in Brazil now, and we don't have it in a worldwide is the main point is because we had the two, two dams failure, okay? Yeah. In less than four years, it was around four years, 2015. In 2000, it was less because one happened in November of 2015, the other failure happened in January of 2019. And it pushes us to move in this direction. As we, Tetra Tech in Brazil, we have more than 20 years experience with mining business. Because we are located in Belo Horizonte, this that I can cons I consider myself as the mining capital of Brazil. Okay, we have many miners uh, around the city, and uh, it's happened here. And we move it ourselves to looking for a partnership to develop this technology. And is is full work, it's full commercial. Okay, and we had we have been experienced this. The development of this technology since in 2016. Okay, we are four years, uh, around four years in experience this type of technology, and, and we're maturing ourselves with the institution together. Do you, when you, when you do a project like this, because you were you were there from the start when they when they started to work with the institute in Australia, and and then Tetra Tech, Tetra Tech took this on um, as a project. Um, were you were you surprised at how quickly it was able to go um, to commercial use? I mean, that's we're, we're talking um, under two years before it's com commercially available. Um, how did that? How did that happen so so quickly? Well, uh, we as as I mentioned, the first one, 2015, pushed us to three system. Okay, right. In a research and development approach, we started to we had one miners that. Uh, believing in the technology and they started to support this technology and we started in one in one research and development approach then came mosaic with bringing it's the the it's two dams for a university with a uh, partnership with university with the center that i'm i'm part of it that's the applied geophysics center in federal university of rio in federal university of rio de janeiro and we started to looking for research okay but the big shift came in 2019 because mm. it was a big impact. And uh, the geotech community started to looking for new technology to support what they, they currently use. Okay? And we had the support. It was a big increase. It was a big surprising how far it came. Okay? But uh, what I can say is that in Brazil, we, the market is in flow because of the, the, the miners, they need, the mining company they need to give a response with new technologies uh, over the, the, the to, can, to guarantee that the physical integrity of the, the structures. Okay? Mm -hmm. And we have a lot, of, a lot of dams here in Brazil to be monitored. I, just a quick, I want to get into some of the, the I, I know your, uh, uh, your, your top on ENR, and I, I actually were explaining what ENR is. Um, so I want to talk about the science stream, but I wanted to get another clarification. So we're talking about blasting um, and uh, micro seismic events and, and things like that. So, or seismic events. But um, what about, we, we of course had a, 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 another um, disaster here with a tailings pond here where, where I'm located in British Columbia in Canada. Is this system also when you're talking stuff like um, like the fluid side of, of tailing uh, pond disruption? So, you know, rainwater flooding too close to wa uh, other water bodies of water, all the, these things. Again, I'm, I'm technically I don't have a solid understanding, so bear with me on it. Is this is this contributing to any of that type of monitoring as well? Or is this purely for seismic events? Well, we, we at the same array, we use it to work with two approaches. What are we calling uh, the only seismic event? We call conventional approach. Okay, conventional causes is more like is more based on, on seismology. 
itself. And but we use uh, the ambient noise to start to see the velocity change over the den, the den wall. And this technology, it supports you to see, for example, uh, internal erosion, if internal erosions happen, or even a pipe, mm -hmm. or if you have any other type of instabilization, okay? And we use the, the ambient noise that is available as a virtual source, and we started to measure the different velocity chains over the, the a pair of sensors. And this velocity chain is totally related with the stiffness of the, the, the dam, the rigidity. It is, okay. okay. And if you lose in, if you lose in velocity, it means that in a certain level, okay, it means that you are losing uh, rigidity, something that's not so good. And it could be related with uh, some internal erosion process that's happening or any other type of stabilization. Okay. And, the, and you don't need a source like a seismic source, like blast or a natural one to start to monitor the, the, the structure. Okay. Hmm. okay. Um, let's talk about the science. Um, the, um, first, please, how do I, how do I approach? I'll, I'll let, I, I'm gonna throw out um, what I want to talk about because I know Tetra Tech is, I mean, they're, I mean, science is just, it's, it's at the forefront. And I want you to tie that in, if you could, just for my own understanding with, let me find this here, um, the ENR ranking. So can you just sort of tie in that, that Tetra Tech leading with science with the ENR rate ranking and help me sort of understand, because it was a little bit of a new ranking for me, so I didn't quite know uh, what it was, and, and I just want some clarification on it. The ENR ranking, they go through the, the companies, the engineers, they have certain levels, top lists, okay? And uh, I can say that uh, Tetratex is most of the top one in, in certain areas for more than 10 years. And in some case, we are in the top five and we are ranked as the best, one of the best consultant company in the ENR. And I, I, I really believe that this response came because of the leading with science approach. It's in, in Tetra Tech came for four scientists that created a company and it's part of the Tetra Tech DNA. Okay? It's to go for science, use the science knowledge to solve the, the market problems. Okay? It brings mm -hmm. us with the science thinking, the science approach, the science technology, okay? the science curiosity, data, data approach and other things. You know? and, uh, puts you in a position to look of the, the market problems in a different way, with a different perspective. And I believe one of the things related to the other one, okay? It's the leading science brings us to the leading position that we are now, and the ENR ranking is just a way that shows that we, it's just assured that we are in that position. Yeah, it's really yeah. It's it's uh, leading the company approach of leading with science has has really put you at the forefront, uh, and and you've become the leader in in the science in this in this stream. Um, and I'm curious, Leonardo, sort of as we wrap up this interview, you've been in the industry for I believe over 20 years. What have you seen? And it's it's always interesting because I I've never I've never been to Brazil. I, I'm sure you've been to Canada many times within the mining. Uh, community um but and i there's a couple questions i have and one what is the um what have you seen uh change over 20 years you, you just said about that leading with science that tetra tech approach and have what shifts have you seen whether it be on a global scale on a local on a, on a local level from a canadian perspective uh, really however you want to approach it um what have you seen as a change within your 20 years from from your 20 years within the industry from 2015 um, with, with the, the, the tailings failure 2019? We've had failures here in Canada, um, of course, around the globe. They happen. What have you seen? What is the shift that you've seen that is most noticeable um, in the industry, just from a, even an industry approach, how a meeting happens, how people are talking about the industry internally? Well, the, the main shift is uh, because of happen, miners is 
uh, it's a little, a little bit more traditional. Okay? The mining business is a traditional business. And with uh, uh, the change of new people, the youngest guys come from the market and uh, pushed by the, these events that failure brings miners to adopt more technology. Okay. What you're seeing more is more uh, autonomous system, yeah. autonomous mine. We are experienced, we have experience here in Brazil with more uh, VR approach, using virtual reality to supporting the, the mine design, okay, and the master plan, mining master plan. And what we can say, it's in, over the last five years, we are seeing that there's a movement for digitalization. Okay? It's more adopt. Okay? The, the, the mining business uses to adopt more technology over software, okay? 3D modeling and other things. Now we have more, so we have more communication, autonomous uh, system, okay? data collected over the field without the presence of a human, engineers to go to the field and collect data, store, and uh, starting to use in data analytics, machine learning. You know, there is a, a, a movement for the mining companies. It's, I can say that's a worldwide to a more adopt in technology. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you think, I, I don't want to nitpick too much on this question, but I am curious because at a, at a high level, let's say a government level, you want governments are demanding you know, it'd be safer, cleaner, et cetera. And then at the company level, they are, you know, publicly traded companies, of course, they put that face forward to say, we are leading in technology, safety, efficiency, and so on. What about in the room? What about the, what about the miner and the people that are actually, you know, working behind the scenes that are doing the job? Is there, do you, do you see any, um, and I, I don't know, of course, this answer, which is why I'm asking you, do you see a shift in the people, people that are in the roles of your, like yourself, but in other roles as well in the industry? Is there more of a shift and an openness to wanting this new technology integrated as opposed to, let's say, 20 years ago, as this stuff was just starting to be talked about yeah. on an individual level? I, 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 yeah, I should yeah. clarify. There is a lot of, uh, it's, mine is you expanding is hiring new people. Mm -hmm. uh, Madam said that uh, we are, even in our office, okay, there is a lot of new generation coming, new geologists, new engineers, new mining engineers. And uh, they, they, they leave the university with the focus on technology. Okay? Yeah. It, it, we, are, we are working with the millennials here now. You have different you know, levels. Yeah? I'm from X generation and, and we have millennials here. It's really interesting because they push us more technology adopts, okay? And, and, and is that maybe it's the shift, in, in a, and I really see the shift in personal adoption because of we are pushing to use because uh, the miners need to go for efficiency, even uh, health and safety, have the, okay? Yeah. In a safety operation, and, uh, but they need more efficiency, to be more efficient. And it's a technology adoption that makes uh, things work uh, faster with lower, you know, uh, low effort. It was good planning with not a, increasing uh, a lot of professionals. With the adoption, we can do more with the same staff. Okay, and part mm -hmm. of this revolution, in my point of view, is came from the the new generation that's coming from the university. They 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 came from the video game. Uh, culture they came from mm -hmm. digital you know they are digital i got it in my when i was in my graduates i started with paper and uh, i i left my maps with cad file okay in four years studying i got the whole range of things okay? doing my yeah. own ma maps with my hand and with my final map when i graduated was with cad files and gis okay? yeah this generation now, they don't know what is, is to do in a map over the paper, you know, with their own hands, literally, <laughs> you know, they, they yeah. all came with the technology approach, with their iPhones, they, with their cell phones, okay? Google, and it's, it's a new generation. I mean, it, it's so, it's a mixing, okay? it's, it's a part of the, the mining demand, 
but part of the we have the the, the young guys engineers that mm-hmm. comes with this approach you know history is going to the history is really the only way we know the answer um to what's going when we look back on on what is going to be the future for us but do you think if you had to make a prediction do you think that with uh work like tetra tech is doing that and i don't know the stats so i'm not even going to give an example uh, example of it but if you looked at over the last 50 years the um the uh let's say dam failures or uh i mean just let's just stick with tailing dams where those have ruptured or had failures or anything land on a global scale. Do you think if we looked at the last 50 years to the next 50 years with all this technology, will it be a significant, it will be, it be significantly less? If you were look to compare the two, would they just be, would it be a completely different number? Do you think if you were just to guess? Yeah, I, I believe the adoption. Okay. It's, there is one quote say, if you don't measure, you cannot measure, man. okay? To, mm. to manage something well, we need to measure. And uh, what I can see is if you can use a tag, what the mining business is, is uh, it's what's happening with the mining business now is sensors, okay? If we, we, the miners, the, the mining company are putting more sensors in the fields. And if we have more sensors, I'm not talking only about the microsystem sensors, I'm talking about in general, okay? Yes. With the dispatch, all things. If you have more sensors in the field, it means that you're collecting more data and you store the data and you can do back analysis and it will improve your management. It does improve your management. We put the mining business in a, in, in a way to do more productive and more safety. Okay? Yeah. You say that it's my, my thoughts for the next 15 years. Sensors are their ship. Store data is, you know, it's, you are the cheapest moment to store data. That's the way. We, need, we have more sensors in the field, sensors in people, sensors in machines, sensors in geotechnical structures. The next level is in the, we are storing this data. And the next point is to use technology to cross correlate them okay? and to improve the management. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, it's um, it's you know, and it's it's one of these things that as as you sort of talk, you realize it's. I I looked at it at it when I approached this interview to start. I really looked at it as a real time what's happening on the site on the ground is sort of how I thought of it. And of course, there's that huge element to it. I didn't really think of it as a documentation of the future of how mining will look, um, and how a tailings a tailings dam in relation to the open pit can be approached and everything like that. And that really. If and I, I want you to clarify this, that really seems to be what that data is going to dictate how it's going to be approached in, of course, Brazil, Canada, and globally, um, because that data is now available on the on the effects of a blast two kilometers from a tailings pond. Yeah, we can do prediction because we are monitoring. Okay? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, uh, and having a, a good database, a historical database. Mm-hmm. You know, each time you have more data, we we are more close to a decision, okay? To see what really happened. Yeah. It's yeah, a matter of time. Good. Yeah. Uh, Leonardo, thank you for coming on the show. I, I really do appreciate it. Um, you know, I've, this, it's such a, it's always a goal to get really good information out uh, to our audience, you know, and it's something that uh, is, um, separates us from from other shows is, is you know you don't need a login to to watch our show or a membership or anything like that and, uh, and those are some great systems that other organizations have in place but anybody can access this this interview and, and learn about what's happening in the mining industry and um, when you're talking about safety and tailings ponds and blasts and open pits and stuff it's just so important and and so now the public has has access to it to learn from it as well as the mining industry um, of course. So yeah, thank you, Leonardo, for coming on the show. I really do appreciate it. And I, I hope at some point you will come back on um, as the technology, as you end up in more uh, locations with, with the sensors uh, and more data is accumulated, you'll be able to come back 
and and we'll sort of get an update on it, you know, <laughs> two years from now or something like that. It'd be quite interesting. Yeah, it would be a good opportunity. Thank you for the, the invitation, uh, Gerard. It was an amazing experience. Okay. And yeah, let's see what happened the next, what our prediction we did here. Let's see what's happened in the next two to five years. <laughs> when we have the, the, all the information accumulated. Thank you, thank you, Leonardo. I really do appreciate it. And thank you, everybody, for watching um, this this episode. If, if you like technical, um, you certainly got it on this episode. There was plenty of slides. And so there's lots of information. And if you need more information, um, I wouldn't reach out to me because I, I don't know. <laughs> but please reach out to Tetra Tech and they can help you out. Please keep watching. Keep recommending guests. We love doing these shows. We love doing, you know, and, and now with this remote, it's so neat because, um, you know, before it would have been so hard to coordinate with, with a guest like Leonardo to come on the show, him being in Brazil, me being in, in Canada. But now we're just able to do this interview. It's really, it's really given us a good opportunity in spite of everything that's going on in the world. So thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you subscribe and see you on the next. And, and of course, thank you to CIM uh, for being a part of the show as well. See you on the next episode, everyone, and we will talk to you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and LinkedIn. If you'd like to be a guest on the show or you know someone that should be a guest, please contact us, info at crownsman.com. Thank you to all of our sponsors, Savannah Equipment, CIM, Power Zone Equipment. Um, thank you again for all your support. We will see you on the next episode.